This episode picks up where our last episode, Death Trap, left off. After Boba Fett tried and failed to kill Mace Windu, Boba disabled the ship and caused it to crash on a nearby planet, with the Admiral still on board. He was planning to give it a softer landing, presumably by cushioning it with his thick accent. A rescue ship has joined Mace and Anakin in searching for survivors, but they're going to need to rush the ones that they do have over to a real hospital in order to ensure that they survive, leaving only the two Jedi and their droids to search the crash site. Mace disapproves of the way that Anakin treats R2-D2, though, encouraging his eccentricities rather than eliminating them like most people do. But Anakin has an association with most people that's comparable to his association with restraint and common sense, so Mace isn't holding his breath. There's an omen of bad news inside. They find two dead troopers, but that's not surprising since A, this ship crashed, and B, dying is what troopers are there for. But these two were shot after the crash. That means that more than likely the assassin either stayed on board or returned after the crash to either confirm Mace was dead or to make him so. So they search the ship while the droids scan for signs of other life forms in the area, and there indeed are, a pair of Gundarks. The droids make a run for it, uh, you know what I mean, but Mace's droid gets grabbed. R2 does try to save him, but it's a lost cause, and the other droid is ripped apart. Ugh, this is like Saw for robots. Elsewhere, Anakin and Mace find most of the bridge crew also murdered, although the Admiral and a couple of his subordinates are unaccounted for, although it's just as likely they were sucked out into space. But if that was the case, what's this Mandalorian helmet doing here? Obviously, it couldn't have been there before. It would have been sucked out, too. But Mace puts the pieces together quickly. A Mandalorian helmet like Jango Fett had. Clone cadets were on board, an attempt on his life, he quickly concludes that Boba Fett was probably involved, and if so, that helmet is probably a message. And it is, in the form of a booby trap, which nearly takes out Anakin, because if it was going to take out anybody, it would be Anakin. He's only saved by Mace yanking him away. And that makes them even, I guess. Anakin's idiocy saved Mace, and Mace saved Anakin from his idiocy. Watching this unfold as Aura, Bosk, Boba Fett, and guy I had to look up on the internet, Castus. That guy is real jittery, especially about having taken the Admiral and these officers prisoner. Which is going to make you wonder what kind of bounty hunter he is if he's nervous about prisoners. I mean, it's like taking a preschool teacher job even though you despise children. There's also a benefit in collecting a reward for killing the Jedi, but Dooku is going to want proof, so they go to collect it. Which means that R2-D2 is going to have to hurry if he's going to save Anakin and Mace, who are trapped under some wreckage. It's too unstable for R2 to try to get them out, so he'll have to call for help from back on Coruscant. But first, he's going to have to get there, and right now the arriving bounty hunters are a problem. Luckily, R2-D2 has seen home alone, so he drops things on them, mucks about with doors, and just generally makes a nuisance of himself. Look out! It's all fun and games until someone loses a head. Aura's had enough and decides to just leave and blow the ship up using Slave 1. So with them leaving, R2 can finally get back to the job of calling for some help, only to have another run-in with a Gundark. The answer is unconventional, but you can't argue with the success. I don't think insurance is going to cover it, though. Unfortunately, that drew some attention. The bounty hunters think that has to be Mace, so they jam all communications, meaning that R2-D2 has no way to call home now, not without leaving the area. Except him flying around in Mace's ship makes the bounty hunters think that Mace is the one piloting it, so suddenly he finds himself in a dogfight, which winds up taking out the fighter's comm unit. And things have been going so well earlier that day. The only choice left is to actually go back to Coruscant, so with a daring escape while being shot at, he reaches one of the hyperspace rings, docks, and escapes, annoying Boba Fett to no end, who assumes that his arch-nemesis has escaped, and not helped by Castus, who has been in charge of whining and complaining this entire episode, now blaming Boba for letting their meal ticket escape. It's like Jar Jar complaining that your behavior is robbing the group of their dignity. But at least now R2-D2 can make his triumphant return. He's not drunk again, is he? Uh, the Jedi will hush it up as always, but really, that droid needs to get into a program. 
While R2 explains what happened, Mace fills Anakin in on the backstory between him, Jango, and Boba, and how it complicates things. I mean, really complicates things. I better simplify. Mace was forced to kill a man in the midst of a large-scale battle to defend himself. Only his son, who was also his clone, witnessed the death and thus wants to kill Mace, and so has killed a whole bunch of other clones of his father to try to accomplish exactly that. Though he has taken advantage of that by getting Mace to mistake him for another clone to try to kill him, but failed to kill him because Boba mistook a white robot the size and shape of a trash can for a six-foot-two black Jedi. Now, to be fair, in the Star Wars galaxy, this kind of thing happens all the time. Slave 1 has left the system, or has hinted that she has a new plan to get Mace now, although it looks like if they want Mace dead, all they have to do is just let nature take its course. I'm starting to regret saving your life. Nonsense. One thing I promise is you will never regret saving my life. Not in a million years. Thanks to R2's message, three ships arrived to rescue them before the inevitable collapse of the bridge, and Mace, who had been critical the entire time of R2-D2's efforts to rescue them, takes a moment to give him an attaboy. Huh. That's definitely more praise than I ever get. Make sure that my Bakta tank has a mirror in front of it so I can spend some time with someone who really appreciates my talents. So they're saved, but the Admiral and his staff are still prisoners. In two weeks, the arc and Season 2 draws to a close with Lethal Trackdown. Overlord.